So right now we are standing in front of the big clean room. And this is actually the largest clean room in its class in the world. And inside, at last, finally, the pieces that have been worked on for years to create the James Webb Space Telescope are really starting to come together. The James Webb Space Telescope is a feat of cooperative engineering. It's an international partnership with physical pieces, engineering work, and transportation being coordinated among multiple teams around the globe. And this piece of equipment has some complex travel needs both on Earth and in space. And one man has to run the show to make sure all of the various teams contributing to the project are working from the same playbook. And for the JWST, that's project manager Bill Oakes. He spoke with us at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center to explain not not only how all of the various pieces of the project will come together, but also what will happen once the JWST is completed and ready for its journey out to Lagrange Point 2. He also let us in on some of the unique challenges that come with building and launching a superpowered telescope. So what about the JWST specs is to you the most impressive part of it? Like what part do you still just kind of shake your head and go, I can't believe we achieved this? It's really big. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of technical specs that, that are, are very difficult to achieve from both a, uh, a thermal standpoint, because when you look at this model, because we're in infrared, we have to be kept really cold. Right. But when you look at the overall size of JWST, it's bigger than anything NASA's built as a satellite goes. Our primary mirror is about 21, 22 feet in diameter. It takes seven of Hubble's mirrors to make up our mirror. Um, so there's a lot of challenges with, um, first of all, you gotta fold this thing up and put it inside a rocket. And this, this itself, um, from the bottom to the top, is over three stories high, and it's about the size of, uh, of a tennis court going this way. That won't fit into a rocket, so it all has to fold up. Um, over the first two and a half weeks, three weeks of the mission, once we're on orbit, all this has to unfold. Each time we unfold, we call it a deployment. We have about 180 of those that all have to work in the first two and a half weeks. So when you combine all of those things together with the technical performance, makes it a, a very challenging mission. I mean, this mission started um, in earnest back in the mid-90s. Yeah. Um, and we've been having hardware built all over the world. Um, right now, it's just, it's all starting to come together here in Northrop. So what you see in the clean room right now is what the, the structure you see in there is what we call the back plane of the telescope. The back plane of the telescope in this model would be this black you see back here, as well as this structure that supports our secondary mirror. Um, this is a composite graphite structure. It was delivered to us uh, from north of Grumman over the summer. And we are now being preparing to put on the, the mirrors to actually start assembling the telescope. Um, so the first mirror segment will go on this, um, this weekend. The primary mirror is made of 18 segments. So we'll be putting them on over the next few months. In the April timeframe, we'll actually start integrating the telescope itself with our scientific instruments. While we're doing all this here and doing some testing at Johnson Space Center, our observatory contractor uh, north of Grumman, we're putting together the sun shield. And if you will look underneath, the actual, we call the spacecraft bus, that basically holds all our electronics boxes, our solar panels for power, antennas for communication, and so on. Because we are so big, um, a, moving anything around is always a challenge. Right. In addition, we are an international partnership mi mission. So um, two of our instruments come from the European Space Agency. One comes from uh, the Canadian Space Agency. But in addition, the European Space Agency provides the rocket to get to space. So we don't launch out of Kennedy Space Center. We actually launch out of Kourou in French Guiana in South America. So obviously the challenge is, how do I get from California over to Kourou? And you would normally think, well, I go on a C5 plane, it's a really big plane, we should fit, but we don't really fit. And if we did, the problem we really have down at Kourou is you have the airfield, and then where the launch site is, there are seven bridges. And JWST is so massive and weighs so much that the bridges there would not support us. So we cannot rebuild the infrastructure of a country. So we will actually go on a boat um, from Long Beach in California, down through the Panama Canal, and then up to Kourou. So you get a cruise out of the deal. Yeah, no, it's not a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cargo ship with just a few folks going on it, so not really a cruise. So I know it's super exciting because even just being here today, we've heard lots of staff members wanting to be on hand when things really start get going. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine how excited you are about it. Uh, it's excellent. I mean, this is, this is the best part of the program. This is where all those years of putting things on paper and designing all start to come together and you've got real pieces of hardware that are slowly building up and we're at the point now where we're putting the big pieces together and then testing it to make sure it all works. 
So now knowing how much work and collaboration and cooperation has gone into this and what an incredible just feat of humanity it is, I cannot wait for the October 2018 launch. And I hope that you too are really excited about it. And if you are and you want to know more, stick with us at now.howstuffworks.com because we're going to keep covering the JWST as it goes through all of its mission phases. So come and see us there.